Temperatures may be dropping in central Ohio, but it's a good time for the Jackets to heat up. In fact, it will be a hot time at Nationwide on this Friday the 13th as Metro rivals Philadelphia and Columbus battle. Jackets and Flyers, it's live and straight ahead only on Fox Sports Ohio. Welcome into Nationwide Arena, where tonight the Philadelphia Flyers and Columbus Blue Jackets will battle. Yes, indeed, it is Friday the 13th, but in a game like this, with Metropolitan Division rivals, luck or lack thereof will have very little to do anything with this battle. In fact, this is the fourth time these two teams have met this hockey season. In two of the first three games, well, just one goal decided it, and the last time in this building, it was Kevin Connaughton with the overtime game winner. Two desperate hockey teams still looking up in the standings. Let's take a look at what's ahead for the Columbus Blue Jackets. And this is the first of two meetings in the next four or five days with the Philadelphia Flyers. You know, they say that your record will define you. Well, let me tell you something. This stretch of 12 games will define the Columbus Blue Jackets. 11 of the 12 games versus teams higher than them in the standings. And all 12 of those games against Eastern Conference foes. How about nine of them being against Metropolitan Division teams? So you look at those games in that stretch and you think, all right, yeah, you get two points for a win, but holy smokes, they are big four-point games. Very, very important for the Columbus Blue Jackets as they will define what will happen to them beyond that stretch of 12 games. This is a special night at Nationwide Arena, as you well know. Scott Hartnell celebrated his 1,000th game as a Columbus Blue Jack or as a National Hockey League player in a Columbus sweater, of course. Tonight, he will get the silver stick, the traditional emblematic uh, statue, if you will, or pre presentation of that 1,000th game. He will have it with his family in hand and all the fans here at Nationwide Arena cheering for Scott Hartnell. So a very special night. We will present the entire silver stick presentation live for you on Fox Sports Ohio. Also, Jeff and Jody will be along. It's all coming next on Fox Sports Ohio. Columbus Blue Jackets hockey on Fox Sports Ohio brought to you by First Financial Bank. Another step on the path to success. By IGS Energy. Take control of your natural gas and energy costs and enroll today at IGSenergy.com. And by Nationwide. At Nationwide, we put members first. To find a local agent, visit Nationwide.com. Nationwide is on your side. Jeff Rimmer, Jody Shelley, Dave Mitzel, rejoining you here at Nationwide Arena. Very special presentation prior to puck drop tonight as the Blue Jackets honor Scott Hartnell for game number 1,000 played Monday night here against the Los Angeles Kings. Hartnell, the flair for the dramatic, rides a three-game goal-scoring streak into this one here tonight, including picking up a goal in his 1,000th game. And Jody, how appropriate. He'll be honored here prior to puck drop with his former team, the Philadelphia Flyers, in the building. Oh, what a, an amazing way to end this week. He played his 1,000th game on Monday. His family was in from all over Canada. His friends were in, his, the people that meant a lot to him. And here he is, former teammates. He played 519 games with the Philadelphia Flyers. They're in the building, and a lot of those guys are very proud of Scott Hartnell and being here tonight to witness this. Well, how proud are they? And there's Scott Hartnell welcoming his parents out onto the ice. And, of course, we speak of Bill and Joy Hartnell. Let's join Greg Murray. Here at Nationwide Arena. In that game, Jackets forward Scott Hartnell became the 297th player in NHL history to play in 1,000 career games. Tonight, we honor Scott for reaching this incredible milestone. At this time, we ask you to turn your attention to the Dispatch Media Center for a tribute to this special player. We're very proud of our third year to select as our first pick in this entry draft from Prince Albert, Scott Hartnell.
Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Hartnell. Cody Scott are his parents, Bill and Joy Hartnell. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to present Scott with a commemorative Tiffany Crystal from the National Hockey League, please welcome NHL Senior Vice President of Hockey Operations and a member of the Hockey Hall of Fame, Mr. Jim Gregory. Now to present Scott with a silver stick that recognizes his first 1,000 games and each of the teams he's played for, please welcome the majority owner and governor of your Columbus Blue Jackets, Mr. John P. McConnell. with a commissioned artwork that represents his thousand game journey through the National Hockey League. Please welcome President of Hockey Operations, Mr. John Davidson. How about that, Jeff? The three teams he played for. Nice touch by the Columbus Blue Jackets. Flyers, he had that long hair. I think that was a playoff run. <laughs> And now to present Scott with an IWC Schaffhausen Pilots Watch. Please welcome the alternate captains for your Columbus Blue Jackets, Brandon Dubinsky, Jack Johnson, and Mark Latestu. It'll take three of them to carry the watch or what? Maybe. Or one carries it, the other two are there for protection. Must be a uh, expensive watch. Well, the guys would have taken up a collection and uh, bought him a nice little gift. Well, that's classy. Let's have a look. <laughs> what a fantastic moment for Scott Hartnell and his family. I'll tell you something, that silver stick. We're talking with the Los Angeles Kings who just went to the White House. They gave a silver stick to Barack Obama and Barack Obama. He, he's gotten a lot of gifts, but I Ladies guess he was just in awe of Scott. that silver stick. The weight of it, it's a really nice trophy. Scotty got one of those here tonight. Boy, I would like to hear Scott uh, talk for a few minutes. He's never short for words. <laughs> no. I guess you'll get him. He's probably got a lot to say there now, but now joining us for tonight. He'll let his actions do the words tonight, Jeff, on the ice, and we'll talk to him after. Yeah. That time now for tonight's national anthem. Leo Welsh. Now here to perform the Star Spangled Banner, please welcome Mr. Leo Welsh. Jackets live pregame, stating, yeah, we love him, he's a great friend, but when the game starts, we aren't friends anymore. And uh, certainly, this game important for both teams. You heard how the Blue Jackets feel about this one in the stretch against the East, and of course, the Flyers, eight points out of that second and final wild card spot. Curtis McElhaney, 50th career game with the Blue Jackets, 6-3 with a 
39 save percentage, 200 or 2.37 goals against average in his last eight starts. And Ray Emery at the opposite end, making his eighth appearance against the Blue Jackets, 3-2 and 1, a 3.32 goals against average and an 8.83 save percentage. Steve Mason on the shelf after arthroscopic surgery. Wes McCauley, Francis Sherrall, the referees, Noah and Lazaro, which are the linesmen. Flyers wearing their traveling lights. They've been in Columbus for the last couple of days. Jackets wearing their home blues. And it will be Couturier and Johansson for the opening faceoff. The Couturier line likely matched up most of the night here against Johansson. We are underway with Felino sending one in, and that one almost handcuffing Emery, who will hold on. We talk about the matchup. That's interesting. Todd Richards has got the decision at home who he's going to start, and he just went right ahead with that checking line. Go head-to-head. -head. May as well go against... Couturier and his group here to start. It's a powerful group that Todd's got reunited here in Johansson, Felino, and Hartnell. And here we go. The face-off to the left of Emery. The draw won by Johansson, played by Wisniewski, who returns to the lineup tonight. Connaughton sends one in, and Emery again, making that glove stop. And again, he made that stop just a half a second late, but he's able to see it through the crowd. I like to shoot first mentality. We're now 13 seconds in, and the Jackets have two shots. Question around town is why are the Jackets always behind on the shooting clock, which is very visible here on our Fox broadcast here next to the score. And it's because uh, they don't come up with that attitude right away and here early. I like it. They got to keep it going all game. Testing Emery early on. There's Giroux who slips and falls. Played behind the net there by Schultz. Off the wall. Borchek waits for it. Goes off Felino. Jackets backpedaling. There's David Savard. On for Johansson. Felino down the right wing. He'll send it off the wall. Dumping it in deep. Far side. Hartnell picks it off. Looks into that slot there. For Johansson gets away from him. And the Jackets will change things up here. Flyers make their third change. And we've yet to play a minute in this hockey game. There is Dubinsky with the left wing pass. It's behind Atkinson. Atkinson, Calvert, and Dubinsky reunited for this one here tonight. Jackets... Look to get something going here early against the Flyers Hockey Club. That have points in seven straight. They've not lost in regulation in seven. They're 5 0 and 2. And as we mentioned, they still think they are very much alive in the hunt for a postseason playoff spot. Greg Maruby telling me this morning, Jody, that it's tonight's game and a Sunday game in Buffalo before they go home to begin a homestand that are really important to the hockey club. And with the Boston Bruins on the road and a lengthy road trip at that, they feel they can cut that eight-point deficit. Oh, it's funny. The teams that are behind the eight ball are looking up and looking at the schedule and seeing where they can make up ground. But we hear the talk every night. It's game by game. And Todd Richards has said for the last month and a half or more, we're only focused on the game at hand. Here, Skilling. Uh, the Cody goal about right wing feed too far there for Anisimov. Emery out of the net to play it. Emery rims it around the boards. Played by Wisniewski up high. The shot towards the net. Redirected there by Anisimov with the active stick, but set it just wide of that open corner. Wisniewski again. Long shot there. And it's deflected wide. Went off Wenberg. Anisimov looks to shovel it ahead. Picked off there by the Flyers. A clearing pass to the right wing. Across the line for Umberger. Can't make the play. Here comes Skilly across the line. The long shot sails high and wide of Emery. Far side. Played by the Flyers and dumped behind the net. Hartnell in pursuit. Chipped off the boards. Long lead pass. Warcheck racing down into Columbus territory, but it's Savard. A quick feed there for Jack Johnson. Those two being reunited here as well. So uh, familiarity the key here for the Jackets tonight, Jody, as they reunite the lines and the defensive pairings as best they can. Well, you get James Wisniewski back. That settles things down a little bit. That is the advantage of having, having healthy forwards, healthy veterans. They play in familiar spots, and Blue Jackets haven't had that luxury many nights this year, Jeff. Schultz dumps it in. It's played there by McElhaney. Orchak unable to play a shot from the point. Fails the attempt there by Luke Shen. Race for the puck, and back to pick it up is Delzato. Michael Delzato on there for Braden Shen down the left wing. Jackets dump it back into Philadelphia territory, and it's played there by Luke Shen. I meant to ask you this question when we played the Flyers before, but uh, how do the brothers and your teammates of both of them, how do they enjoy playing with one another? Well, they love it. I mean, what a nice opportunity. Obviously, Luke was in the league before Braden came in. Luke was with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Braden got drafted to the Los Angeles Kings. Then they get come over to trade. Both of them end up in Philadelphia. And, and I tell you what, they are brothers. They hang out all the time. Here across the line. 
Calvert had it taken away by Simmons. And Simmons, certainly the hottest of their offensive players right now. In fact, hotter than Voracek and Claude Giroux. There's Grossman in deep. Flyers playing without Braden Coburn on that blue line as well. LeCavalier spins and turns, taken away by the Jackets. And it's Corey Trump on that left wing, playing on the fourth line with Bull. And Letestu cuts in front. And it just sent wide of the net on that far side. Jackets get it back again. There's Trump. He's got the feet moving. Bull capped in front of the net. Down is Emery in the blue paint. And he will hold on 4-0-8 into this fast-moving first period of play. What a great shift. What a nice entrance to the game for Corey Trump. Great confidence. He's played up on the second line with Dubinsky the last few games. And he was talking this morning in the room. I have to remember how to play on that fourth line, but... I think his line mates love this. Anytime you have a guy out there that can hold on to the puck and keep it, it gives you an opportunity to get out and find some open, open ice. In that instance, you saw Jared Bull hung up on the on the far post with Grossman. But that's nice to have that confidence on the fourth line with Corey Trop. I can't forget Corey Trop's line. Corey Trop's line after he uh, scored his first goal of the season. And he said something to the effect, I only score pretty goals. Well, that was a pretty play there as he tried to send it home on Emery. Long shot sails wide off the stick there of Delmar. Played in the corner here. Delmar reaching for it. Jackets up on that far side. Stepping up his strike. Here's an easy mob. All by himself. Waits for reinforcements. Skilly joined the rush. Skilly now circling the net. Jack Skilly spins, turns, throws it across. That goal mouth in front. Skilly can't pull the trigger. Savard will, but it's deflected wide. Hartnell now. Walking up, up high, Jack Johnson. Jackets have had the territorial edge here in the early going of this one. A backhand attempt there off the glove of goaltender Emery. LeCavalier trying to hold off Jack Johnson. Jackets with the pressure on in Philadelphia territory. Just past the five-minute mark. Some Three shots for here. the Jackets, none for the Flyers. Some good shifts here for the Columbus Blue Jackets to start the game here on their toes. You see them in the offensive zone. Some good attempts at net, really keeping Ray Emery busy. There's Voracek. Puck rolls off his stick. Jackets in control here in the early going. Hartnell now, away from strike, dumps it behind the net. Puck picked up there by Felino. walks in front, the backhand attempt. Sails high and wide. Up along the board, Giroux dancing away from Johansson, who's able to steal it back, hands it to Felino, and he rifles it wide of the net. Great work by Johansson. Felino set up in the slot, but able, unable to pull the trigger and get it to the net. It looked like he was trying to hit Ryan Johansson's stick. Ryan Johansson with a clever play on a two-on-one. Passed it back to Felino and put his stick on the ice, went towards the net. They just couldn't connect. I don't love the jacket start here tonight. Calvert, I like to see them rewarded, though. Dubinsky reaching for it, can't make the play here. White. Gets it ahead, shot there by Lawton, deflected wide. Off the backboard, Lawton will play it. First round pick of these Flyers, former teammate of Boone Jenner with the Oshawa Generals. Boone Jenner, Cole Castles, really good buddies. And uh, I know when Lawton's in town or, or Boone's in Philly playing them, they always reunite and enjoy the NHL lifestyle. Speaking of Boone Jenner, he'll join us in the first intermission. Get an update on uh, his health. And talk to him about this hockey game. Ask him about Scott Lawton. He loves him. Good player, a lot of potential. He's only a young kid, Scott Lawton. He's got a lot to learn, but he's fitting in this Philadelphia Flyers roster very well. Reed across the line. Dishes it on that right wing for Simmons. A hook there on Trapp that goes unnoticed. Kept in there. Simmons fires. First shot there at McElhaney. Simmons gets it back. Thrown up high. Long shot there by Couturier. Knocked down in front. So Delzato had moved into that slot area down low. But the Jackets able to turn it away. That is young Anthony Stolarz on the left. And, of course, Ray Emery tonight starting goaltender. All this on account of an injury to Steve Mason that required arthroscopic surgery this week. That's amazing footage. That's in between a TV timeout. He does a little ritual where he taps the boards like that. 
And just as he stepped away, he came up lame. And watch this. He's getting, I mean, he needed major assistance to get down the hallway. Can't put any weight on that right leg. Mason's had a solid year for the Flyers, but unfortunately, the injury bug has certainly plagued him. He's had back issues, back spasms. And, of course, uh, he's had a couple of injuries with those knees. But uh, at this point... General Manager Ron Hextall says he'll be back in two or three weeks. They are not going to shut him down for the balance of the year. Strike. Backhands it ahead. Knocked out. Again, the Flyers still believe they've got the legitimate shot at a postseason playoff spot. Right now, their eyes on Boston in that second wild card. Strike behind the net. Jackets have their own ideas about this one here tonight. And a stretch head-to-head. -head against the East in the Metropolitan Division in particular. Long shot sails in off the stick of Giroux. Felino will play it along the left wing boards and it's out there for Luke Shen. Shen on to Delzato. Delzato across the line. Drops it there for Le Cavalier. Let's one fly. Juggle. Rebound left in the slot. The Jackets are quick to clear and away goes Skilly. Skilly down that right wing. Edged out of the play there by Luke Shen and picked up behind the net. The Flyers. Le Cavalier. And his pocket picked, and Isimov up high, looking for Wenberg down low. Luke Shen keeps it away from Skilly. Wenberg steps into him, down the right wing, and out. This is Belmar with Vandeveld. The Jackets break it up. Off the wall, right wing, Skilly. Able to chip it by, but Koliakovo looks cross ice. Redirected there. By Vandeveldi and the Jackets change up as play continues and it's James Wisniewski. A pass dropped back by Dubinsky for Wisniewski at the offensive blue line. Matt Calvert shovels in. Grossman behind the net. Set off the wall. This is R.J. Umberger. Umberger's pass knocked down. Picked up by Atkinson and tossed back for Golubov. How about this line reunited? Dubinsky, Atkinson, Calvert. These guys are rolling pretty good earlier in the season. So is the Johansson Hartnell Felino line. So, a couple of things back to familiar areas that were happening earlier this season. I think these guys have found that chemistry, all important chemistry that teams need to win. Atkinson leads the Jackets with five game winning goals. Down the right wing and across the line. The Flyers move into the slot. Quick shot there by Lawton. And the stop made by McElhaney. How about the Toyota Keys presented by your Central Ohio Toyota dealer? Well, the Philadelphia Flyers are one of the best teams at having their defensemen join the rush. So you got to limit the odd man rushes. They will jump, jump, jump out of the defensive zone. Keep an eye on that. Shut down the big two. Borchek and Giroux, 113 points combined to this point. Got to shut those two down for sure. Shoot early and often. Didn't just add that one. That's one from the beginning of the game. And the Jackets have come out and started with that. They have to continue with that for 60 minutes. Jackets have certainly found the back of the net here recently, winning two of their previous three games. A disappointing loss, although they were pressing at the end against LA Monday night. They've scored 14 goals in these last three games, 13 of them at even strength. The Jackets earlier on this season had difficulty, Jody, scoring at even strength, have certainly found the back of the net here recently. That's right, Jack Johnson picked up several pluses. I think he got seven or eight in the last few games. Much needed for him. He's a plus eight and five points in those last three games. Up high. Long shot trickles through. And Giroux sends it wide as Jack Johnson hit him right there in front of McElhaney. Good job by Jack Johnson. You don't want to play the puck on Claude Giroux. You have to play the body. And Jack, the big man, did that there. He buckled at Giroux there. Hartnell flips a back end. It's knocked down. Flyers move up ice and quickly at that. Across the line, Simmons walks right in and scores. In transition, the hottest of the Philadelphia Flyers, Simmons, who now has 20 goals to lead the Flyers, adds to his point streak with that one. Well, let's look at this here. Look at the Blue Jackets making their way up ice. Watch what happens here, Jeff. Transition, and watch the defenseman on the left side of your screen going for a change. Here comes Connaughton on, tries to pick it up. Simmons doesn't need much time or space, but that change cost Jacket, the Jackets a two-on-one. And Wayne Simmons took that right to the net himself. 20th goal of the year, as I mentioned. He leads 
for the Flyers in that regard and Philadelphia take the one nothing lead and for the first time tonight they're leading on their shot clock as well with their fourth shot come on here after the Jackets territorial play in the first five minutes but well, unable to beat Emery down that right wing Skilly fought off there by Emery left in the slot Wenberg tried to chop it home away go the Flyers Delzato at center dumping in far side Belmont looking there for Vandeveld. Le Cavalier walks up. On here, up high for Grossman. Shot by Kuliakovo, deflected high and wide. One assist, that to Reed from Simmons, or Simmons from Reed. It is 1-0 in favor of these Philadelphia Flyers. Kuliakovo able to fish that puck free away from the oncoming Blue Jacket. Tossed in front there by Grossman. Flyers break out down that right wing. This is Lawton. Chips it behind the net. Lawton now looking to walk out. Turned around on the play by the Jackets defenseman Savard. McElhaney right there in the blue paint will wisely hold on as the Flyers storm around the Jackets cage. 8.09 left. Opening period. Flyers strike first. Flyers have the lead here at Nationwide Arena. 1-0. 8.09 left in the first period. These two guys right here. Scott Hartnell had a nice role with the Philadelphia Flyers. He was with Borchek and Giroux his last few years. And since he left there, that space, they've had a tough time filling that role, that left-handed shot role on the power play and regular shift. Brayden Chen is filling that, filling that role tonight. And he has been talking to Scott Hartnell about that position. What do you do? What have you been doing? How have you had success in that position? Because the chemistry between those three guys was unreal. And Scott has got this signature spot where he can find that little bit of area, not need much space, and get the puck on that and usually score. So Brayden Shen been doing his homework, and Scotty Hartnell has been helping him and told him we worked on it every single day. Giroux to Hartnell. Voracek to Hartnell to get that awkward position shot on. McElhaney just forced to make a pretty good stop on a redirect and a shot from the point. The Flyers certainly weathered the storm here early on, and it's up to the Jackets, Jody, to get back onto that horse here and start what we saw in the first five minutes of this period. That's right. Good momentum, good speed. Nice opportunities they didn't take advantage of, but they cannot change anything. they got to play the same way here. Flyers walk in again. Golubov trying to hold off and the flyer there on that wing. That was a situation where the Jackets got a little flat-footed in their own zone. That was Umberger, familiar guy in these parts. Just really back Golubov right back up on top of McElhaney. Luckily, McElhaney stayed with that and kept the puck out. Made along the near boards. Backhanded in by Giroux. Here's Jack Johnson reaching for it. Savard comes in front of the Jackets net. Hartnell there. A little housekeeping. And they move off ice as Felino rifles it in. Johansson pressuring along the near boards. Loose puck picked up. A clearing pass. Voracek takes it from Braden Shen. And offside the call. 6.42 left. First period. Before the Jackets hit the ice, get ready to join the battle on Blue Jackets Live. It's on Fox Sports Ohio, of course. Blue Jackets Live is brought to you by your Central Ohio Toyota dealers. So as Steve Mason out, Ray Emery gets the call. And, and Jeff, think how important timely saves are. You look at the way this game started. The momentum is in the favor of the home team here, the Columbus Blue Jackets. But Ray Emery has made some nice saves, settled the play down a few times. So let his team get their feet under him, and they come back and get the first goal tonight. Now, he made two or three outstanding glove stops as the Jackets stormed out here in the first five minutes. The territorial play very much in their favor. And you're right until the uh, Flyers could get on track. And Emery, the draft pick of the Ottawa Senators, fourth round pick. Found a home here since 2013, signing as a free agent. Well, we talked about timely goals and timely saves, and that's just a good example of the energy to come out for the Jackets and how he held the fort. Columbus now has got to get their push back on here to get back down the front. And if you join us late, midway through the period, Wayne Simmons, with a burst of speed, moved right in and beat McElhaney with a great shot. His 20th of the season to lead. 
this Flyers Hockey Club in goals. Yeah, there is Craig Berube. Second season as head coach. Came on in relief of Peter Laviolette last year. And, of course, Laviolette now in Nashville. But talking this morning to Gordon Murphy, he thinks Craig Berube is an underrated coach. And uh, you talk to players. And Jody, uh, you had a chance to observe uh, observe Berube as an assistant coach, as a player in Philadelphia. And I've known uh, Craig for a long time as a former player in Washington. And, boy, oh, boy. He has learned a lot picking the brains of uh, several of his former coaches, including Jerry Murray and Ken Hitchcock. Well, he's very smart, right? And, and uh, Daryl Sutter is another guy that comes to mind. He's one of those guys that observes and learns and watches in all situations, not only as a player, but as an assistant coach, he did that. And that's why he's back there very confidently behind the bench of the Philadelphia Flyers. You know, that is a great point there by Daryl Sutter because talking to Berube shortly after he took the coaching job, I asked him about Daryl Sutter and he said he taught him more than anything. What he taught him, Jody, and, and you'll appreciate this, was to always be calm on the bench. He says, if you get nervous and you get uh, out of whack behind the bench, the players follow you. Leadership right there. And he was a great leader as a player. Greg Maruby doing an outstanding job behind that Flyers bench. Five minutes and 20 seconds left. There's Shen, Braden Shen. Dishes it to the corner, cycling up. Stepping up there is Delzato, pulls his way by Felino, races after that puck in the corner. Jack Johnson is there. Shen looking for Giroux. Picked off there by Ryan Johansson. Head to head, the top two lines for the respective teams. A pass on the wing for Hartnell off his skate. Played by Luke Shen, and it's on here to Delzato. Michael Delzato, high praise, the draft pick of the New York Rangers. Long lead pass there, knocked down by the Jackets. White hustles to the far side. Hands it. Dubinsky back to the point, up on that right wing Atkinson with Matty Calvert who sprints off into the corner. Calvert attempting to finish his check there. Atkinson up for the puck. Dubinsky will drop it behind the net. Calvert walks out, throws it in front. Dubinsky reached for it. Calvert up high here to goal above. All kinds of traffic in front of that flyer net. Tooten lets one fly. There's Dubinsky. Grossman gets an arm around him. Jackets come up with it. Atkinson had it. It was poke checked away. And R.J. Umberger dumps it the length of the ice. This will be icing. Columbus Blue Jackets hockey is brought to you by Nationwide, the official sponsor of the Columbus Blue Jackets. James Wisniewski back in the lineup. Missed a couple of games. Good to have him back. We weren't sure how long he was going to be out, but just that veteran presence. He's back with Connaughton, and we saw a couple of games ago, the first game he was out, the defensive pairs were all over the place. When you get these guys back together, Jeff, it really settles things down all over the place. So good job by Todd Richards. Nice to have those guys back. From the draw, Grossman circling the net. He's had to adjust all year long. He's well, guys all over the place. Seven regulars out of the lineup again here tonight. Another icing call. And with the icing call, let's check out tonight's elk and elk injury report. As we mentioned, seven jackets out this evening. We'll talk to one of them here at the end of the period. Boone Jenner. Brian Gibbons happy to say back with the hockey team and skating regularly. So it won't be too long before we possibly see Gibbons back. Yeah, we saw him today and yesterday at practice with the, with the guys. Big smile on his face. Quick shot as the Jackets win the draw. It's blocked by White. Wisniewski moving in, trying to feather a backhand pass into the slot. Comes up high here to Connaughton. Connaughton had the game winner in overtime the last time these two teams played. The Flyers tied it up. Braden Shen in the last minute. But then the Jackets came back with a goal from Connaughton in overtime. And here Connaughton, top of the circle. Let's one fly. Kick save. The pad there of Emery. Todd Richards getting his big line out against this line that got stuck out on an icing, trying to take advantage of that faceoff win. Two icings back to back. They've been out there for quite some time here. And now the Jackets pretty well in control. Felino, cross ice, toss back to Wisniewski. In front, Felino, and moving laterally is Emery to make the stop. And the Flyers take exception to Felino with the extra little shove there. 
But a little discussion going on. Emery makes the stop. And moving laterally, stops Polino. Here with Scott Hartnell. Scott, first to test the period. You guys had a lot of zone time. You spent a lot of time in their offensive zone. It's one of the best period, uh, periods of the year. You know, that was a long one for us. Uh, you know, we had six or seven attempts, and we keep doing that with traffic gathering win. Let's talk about what a special night it was for you, the silver stick and everything else. Talk about that ceremony and the impact it had. Yeah, it's cool to see mom and dad on the ice. And, uh, it, you know, it's just been an amazing uh, bunch of years. Uh, a lot of great teammates along the way. These guys here at Columbus are awesome. You know, it's a packed house. Uh, you know, get a big win tonight, it'd feel even better. A little extra motivating with these guys on the other end? Yeah, it's always nice to, you know, get out there and battle against these guys. We've got to have fun and get on the body and uh, get the win. Scotty Hartnell, such an emotional guy. You see there, he's in the middle of the battle. Yes, he does an interview. You know, he talks about the period, and then he goes into talking about the presentation and the ceremony. You can see that smile on his face. He's so proud to have his parents here. I tell you what, we said it last broadcast, they are the nicest people. And he's so proud to have them in his corner. I just love that moment where he took a breath and thought about all that just happened. Now he's back to battling. It's been a great week for him and uh, well-deserved. Here's Skilly off the wall. Flyers march out of their own zone. Buck chipped in. Reed dumps into the corner. Simmons trying to get a stick on it. Jacket Skilly able to send it to center. Delzato hammers it right back in. New lease on life for Delzato, and he's fit in pretty well here with Philadelphia. He loves it here with these guys. They gave him an opportunity. You know, he left New York and went to Nashville. Things didn't work out. Philadelphia picked him up, and he's really fit in well. He's an offensive defenseman, and when you ask him what's different, he said, I'm just playing. They're letting me play my game. Oh, Calvert with a steal. Following it up there is Dubinsky, and the stop made by Emery. Good work there, down low by Matt Calvert. And it's Matt Calvert that's in the board battle there with Dubinsky. And as this puck makes its way to the front of the net, Matt Calvert wastes no time. You saw that with that quick release as he had it on his forehand here. Good. Right there. Good job by Atkinson. Now watch them. They converge to the net. You see Philadelphia, they do a good job in front of Emery. Really boxing up. They got a lot of space there. Jackets with 10 hits. Felino's got four of them. Johansson, three in front for Letestu, and he sends it off the side of the net. It's a nice little play by Corey Chop, who went it, took the body. Ended up pushing the Philadelphia Flyers defenseman against the wall, making that nice little play. Far side, Le Cavalier. Play called, and we may have too many men on the ice here against the Flyers. They're calling it offside. And the discussion continues between Francis Chiron and the Flyers bench. Well, just a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, look forward to Miller time later in tonight's contest, brought to you by Miller Light. They're still talking to referee Chiron. Just showed the fourth line there, Jeff. They had a good shift rolling around. Jared Bull with a big hit. Corey Trott, I'm telling you, he's picked up some confidence. He's really played a nice game most of the year with how he gets in with that attitude of, you know, he just wants to play and bring his same game every day, and, and he's been rewarded for that. Great on the puck. Braden Shen drops it for Delzato, who joined the rush across the line. Tried a little toe drag to walk around the Jackets defense, but Savard didn't bite. Loose puck picked up in the corner. That's Atkinson sending it ahead. Down the right wing, Dubinsky in pursuit. It's chopped ahead there by Schultz and back into Jackets territory. Less than a minute to go in the opening period. Jackets leading on the shot clock 11 to 7. They trail on the goal by Simmons. Schultz had the stick knocked out of his hand. Braden Shen sends it wide. Far side strike. Hartnell pressuring him. Toss to the far side. Good hustle there by Hartnell. Hartnell tried to feed it in front for Felino. First attempt failed. Now looks behind the net. It's picked off there. Up along the boards. Johansson battling there. And on that far side, Couturier drops it back for strike. Delzato waits patiently. He wanted the puck here on the near wall. Couturier out of his own zone. Johansson able to knock it free. Wisniewski now sends it ahead. Johansson unable to cradle that puck. 
Couturier well into the final minute. Handed here to Reed. Reed squeezes by Wisniewski. Kanaten can't make a play. Final 10 seconds. Play in the corner. We'll talk to Boone Jenner in our first intermission after Dave Metzl has somebody join him at the conclusion of this opening period. Final second ticks off, and there it is. The end of period number one. Blue Jackets with 11 shots. The visiting Flyers with seven, but they find the back of the net on Wayne Simmons' 20th of the year. After one period here at Nationwide, Philadelphia won. Columbus no score. Columbus Blue Jackets hockey on Fox Sports Ohio brought to you by Huntington Bank. At Huntington, you can bank like a real fan. Get your Blue Jackets debit card to bluejacketsbanking.com. By Ohio Health, the official health care provider of your Columbus Blue Jackets. And by Five Hour Energy Shots. Now with a new improved taste. All but set for second period play. Flyers lead 1-0 on that goal by Simmons, his 20th of the campaign to lead Philadelphia. Nick Foligno leading all players. We talked about the Jackets in hits. He led all players in that opening period with a total of four. Kevin Kanaknu had the game-winning goal the last time these two teams met in overtime, leading all players on both sides with three shots. And there is Foligno, four hits on the night. Simmons, who showed a tremendous burst of speed coming down that wing, catching the Jackets. They switched up the defensive pairings and beats Curtis McElhaney. Yeah, he could sense that odd man opportunity. And he, boy, I tell you what, he's got some speed. And you saw him put the finish on that, too, in that last rush. So, set for the draw. Couturier and Johansson as they did to open up the first period. Flyers control the right wing feet picked up by Connaughton. Backpedaling into Jackets territory off the stick of Hartnell. Johansson will send it cross ice. Takes it from Wisniewski. Looks to the right wing for Felino. Off the wall, Johansson. Johansson moves it. Fires a shot high and wide. High off the glass. Away goes Couturier to center. He's got Reed on the left. Simmons on the right. Tries to split the defense and walk in and didn't miss by much. Chopped up high. Backhanded there by the Flyers. Reed unable to get a stick on it. Wisniewski will. And for the Jackets, he looks to the left wing boards for Johansson. Drops it back for Connaughton. On for Johansson. Neutral ice. Wisniewski steps up and from center will chip it in before heading off to the bench. A couple good decisions there by the veteran James Wisniewski. One behind the net. He knew that the Flyers needed a change. He waited to see if the guy was really going to come finish a check. He didn't. And right there at the end of a shift, just got the puck deep. Got off the ice. Dubinsky racing after it. Emery out. He'll leave it there for Delzato. On to Luke Shen. Off the wall, Le Cavalier. Le Cavalier. Backhands, but not out of the zone. Here's Atkinson. Looks for some open ice. Settles the puck down. Fires his shot. And it goes off the pad of Emery and is quickly cleared by the Flyers up ice. Back is Atkinson. First back for the Jackets. McElhaney down. And he'll cover up. Well, that last opportunity for Cam Atkinson. The Flyers got crossed up on their own end. Cam Atkinson gets the puck here. Nice move to cut to the middle, and even here he loses the puck. It looked like he was going to pass it to support, but he, he saw that Dubinsky was in front of the net. Great decision by him. Emery had to make a heck of a save there. Faceoff will come to the left of McElhaney. Lou Giroux and Alexander Winberg will do the honors. Claude Giroux was 5-0 in the face-off face circle that first period. No shots on net, along with Jake Voracek. One of the keys tonight was keep those two guys in check. They did a good job that first period. Voracek along the wall. Tossed behind. Braden Shen looked to walk out. Voracek now. Savar chasing him. Latestu able to knock it free and away from Voracek. Moved by Wimber. Latestu out for the faceoff. And now finds his way to the bench. Jackets have that normal line out there with Skilly, Wenberg, and Artem Anisimov, who's not taking any draws for the balance of the year. 
know he's coming back from that tricep injury, but Wenberg, and you see in support in the defensive zone, Latestu out there just to, for reassurance in that uh, critical area. Here, Jack Johnson, Skelly, and it's denied the scramble in front. I don't know how Emory saw that one through all that traffic. Yeah, you had Grossman, you had Wenberg stacked up in the crease. Here's Corey Trout, keeps those feet moving. Jackets, like they did in the first period, Jody, have come out here in the second, again carrying the play. And a penalty upcoming. The first of the hockey game, and a holding call here, called by Wes McCauley, will give the Jackets their first manpower advantage. They got all but one the other night against L.A. Number 32, Philadelphia minor penalty, holding. Well, the message between periods by Coach Richards would have been, let's get back on the four check, get moving. When we did that, we created opportunities. And you see when they do it here, that was that opportunity where you had Pulavacchio, Grossman, Wenberg, all stacked up in the crease, plus the goaltender. That's a big, uh, that's like a soccer when you make a wall for a penalty kick. Tough to get around that one. <laughs> Fifth on the power player, the Jackets, 38 goals and a 22.8%. Flyers, 28th of 30 against the kill. 75.7%, but they have killed off 21 of the last 23 over this stretch where they picked up points in seven straight at 5-0-2. Left wing feed, this is Felino to center. He's got Hartnell on the wing. Passes to Hartnell, chipped off into the corner. Schultz battling, swept up the wall. Connaughton throws it in front. Johansson unable to get a stick on it. Tossed behind the net, there's Luke Shen. Wisniewski pinching in, gets it back to Connaughton. On for Johansson. Johansson, Connaughton, and that's deflected wide. Wisniewski in front. Oh, one was tipped by Hartnell, but Emery again makes the pad save, and away goes Reed shorthanded. Drops a pass. Couturier can't make the play. Johansson now looks to the right wing, and it's Felino across the line. Indisima darts down that left side. Up high, Connaughton. Left-handed shot on the right point. The right-handed shot at the left point, and Wisniewski's drive was stopped again by Emery and knocked down the ice. That might have went, might have went off the stick of Couturier first, changed directions and speed, but Ray Emery stays with it, kicks that left pad out on that James Wisniewski shot. Dancing through the neutral zone and across the line. Atkinson to the point. Savard for Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson moving in, head up, looks. Hands it off to Anisimov. Artem Anisimov with Atkinson. Poised and ready, top of the circle. Anisimov now takes the pass. It's on to Dubinsky. 12 seconds left of the Jackets power play. Savard on for Dubinsky, top of the circle. The goal line, Anisimov. Goal mouth pass there. Jack Johnson had peeled in from the point. Now Atkinson, the waiting seconds of the power play. One outstep strike. Flyers have killed it off. Throw it in front. Save Emery. Rebound swept wide. Again, Emery down to make a pad save. And it's picked up there by the Flyers. Knocked off the wall. Atkinson able to steal it. Up high. Here's Atkinson. A wrist shot sails wide. Grossman all over Dubinsky. Down is Emery trying to cover up. Thrown in front. Here's Savard with a drive. And it's blocked there by Belmar. Belmar turning his back on it. Able to stop that one. Jackets all over the Flyers here. Jack Johnson. Savard back to Johnson. Jackets getting fresh legs on. The Flyers have the majority of their players up from the kill. How about that whole sequence there, Jeff? Not only puck possession, but when they gave it up with a shot or a block shot, battle second, third effort to get the puck back, winning those battles, keeping possession in the offensive zone. Umberger sprints in. Jackets keep it away from him. Now Umberger, below that goal line, looks up high. There's a shot that sails wide off the stick of Koliakobo, paired here with Luke Shen. Toss back to Shen from Lawton. Right side. A backhand attempt there by White. Savard sends it ahead. Felino flips it up. And deep in the Flyers' territory as we approach the six-minute mark. Continuous action here. Knocked off the wall. There's Hartnell. Ricochets off a leg. Picked up there by Braden Shen. Center two. On to Hartnell. Break wide. 
There is Felino, backhands one wide, plays it off that backboard. Johansson seems to get caught up in his skates. Left wing and out of the zone. Right wing feed. Jake Vorchuk trying to squeeze through and away from Fetter Tutin. Olabuff coming together there with Braden Shen. Giroux back to neutral ice. Columbus doing a fantastic job in support of each other. And boy, are they skating right now. Voracek, Giroux back to Voracek, looking for Giroux. Can't make a play. There's Hartler away from strike. Voracek, good hustle to keep it in there. And it's Giroux tossing it behind the net. Golubov defends. Golubov battling there against Shen. On the half board, Giroux. Giroux trying to fire a shot towards the net, but Hartnell block. Walking in front, down with that left pad. There was McElhaney, ever alert, as Voracek tried to quick wrap around. Meantime, here's Atkinson. Atkinson, top of the circle, puck gets away from him, and it's played there by Reed. Reed rims it around the wall, picked up there by Simmons on the right wing. Hands it back to Reed. Jackets come up with it. Connaughton rifling it wide, right wing. Matt Calvert dancing free. Calvert. On to Atkinson. Up high, Connaughton. Connaughton looks for Atkinson in the corner. Dubinsky below the goal line. Dubinsky keeps the feet moving. Chased there by Delzato. Dubinsky, Delzato, former teammates of the Rangers. Tossed Atkinson back to Wisniewski. Off the glove of Emery. Wisniewski gets it again. Settles it down. Dubinsky throws it in front. Calvert. There's Atkinson from a sharp angle. That's off the side of the net. Approaching the eight-minute mark. And we continue with action. Deep in Philadelphia territory. Awesome attempt at the net. And look at these guys all over the puck. There's no one standing still. After the shot, they're getting right on it. Nice break there as Matt Reed goes down. Connaughton tipped by Dubinsky. Scores! Brandon Dubinsky able to redirect the Connaughton shot. And the Jackets finally rewarded for their play around the Philadelphia net. Well, well that was about five minutes of sustained pressure by the Columbus Blue Jackets. You see Matt Reed lose his edge. Dubinsky knows where to go. Front of the net, stick on the ice. You see Reed there, he's down in the pile. Connaughton heads up play. And they finally beat Ray Emery, who stood tall here for the Philadelphia Flyers, killing some, including some big penalty killing time for the Philadelphia Flyers. Ray Emery couldn't stop that play by Brandon Dubinsky on the doorstep. Relentless effort here by Columbus. Shift after shift, getting on the puck, retrieving pucks. And you said it, Jeff, they came out at the start this second period with a purpose, and it's uh, it's really showed here. Man, boy, they got rewarded. Ninth goal of, uh, or excuse me, first goal in nine games for Dubinsky, his fourth of the season. And there, all you youngsters at home watching, keep those sticks on the ground, and you saw with that stick down, able to redirect the Connaughton shot from the point, and the Jackets have tied it up. Heads up play by Kevin Connaughton, though, to get that puck. He had to get a pass a stick. First of all, the defender's got a stick there. He's got to move and open himself in that position to, to find that passing lane, connect with Dubinsky. Just a perfect play. Dubinsky again his fourth, first in nine games. Connaughton will pick up the primary assist. Tied at one. Right wing there for Jared Bull. One assist that to Connaughton at 8.09. We are tied here as the puck deflected out of play. We will step aside. Dubinsky's tied it up for the Jackets. Great work by the Jackets down low. And there the redirect perfectly executed. Nationwide game 1001 for Scott Hartnell. 1-1 one, one is the score right here, right now on FoxSportsOhio.com. What's next for Scott Hartnell after his milestone? An Oscar-worthy performance from Cavs guard Kyrie Irving and how LeBron James is giving back at NBA All-Star Weekend. Complete coverage of all of today's action involving Ohio sports. It's brought to you by 1-800-SafeAuto.com. From the faceoff, one by Giroux over Ryan Johansson. Sent off the wall. 1-1 one, one the score here if you've joined us late. Simmons in the first period, midway through, and Dubinsky at 8.09 here in the second. Lorchak has a roll off his stick. Strike. Schultz back for strike as we approach the nine minute mark. Jackets head out right after this one. It's on the Long Island for Saturday evening engagement with the New York Islanders. Certainly one of the surprise teams in the National Hockey League. 
They have done a marvelous job this year. Well worth their standings in the Eastern Conference and specifically in that Metropolitan Division. They come in tomorrow night leading the Metropolitan Division by one point over second place Pittsburgh. Here's Giroux across the line. A little give and go there. Knocked away by Jack Johnson, alertly so. Jack Again. Johnson there right on the doorstep as Giroux gets that puck. Jack Johnson right in his pocket, giving him no time, no space to do anything with it. Seconds away from the midway point of period two at the hockey game. Lawton back to retrieve. Dishes to the far side. Delzato pressured there. Wenberg bouncing puck. Taken out of the play. And here, this one picked up there by Anisima. Wisniewski on for Connaughton. Shot is blocked. Picked up by Wenberg up high. Skilly. Dances away from Luke Shen. Skilly walks out. Skilly now. Keeps those feet moving. Drops it back to Connaughton. Connaughton cross ice Wisniewski. Shot blocked up high. Wisniewski pressure. Dumps it back in. Jackets have got to clear the zone. Not only that, but they're going to head off for a line change. I like what Jack Skilly did, did there. He was behind the net with speed. He had his head up. He didn't have an option he liked. And a lot of time you'll see guys just throw it to the front of the net, hoping that a play will connect. He made sure he made a nice play to keep that puck down there in flyer territory. Wisniewski turns it over. There it's picked up by Simmons. Simmons fires from a sharp angle. Pats a big rebound. Good Corey job Trump. by McElhinney there. Keep that Keep that puck, that rebound in the same area that he was facing. Bull throws it in front. Olabuff dumps behind the net. Good to see Jared Bull in the Jackets lineup. He got hurt. The knee bent awkwardly. Monday night against L.A. It looked pretty bad, but uh, as Bull told me yesterday after practice, not as uh, that is was originally thought. He doesn't miss a game. But that's just Jared Bull. And of course, he had a two-game point scoring streak snapped. He says, I'll start another one tonight. Oh, good. Gotta love his attitude. 8.25 left. Along the board. Backhanded up high. Simmons off a stick and alertly taken away there by Fetter Tootin. With Reed camped in front. Simmons was covering there on the defensive position for the Flyers and their heads up play to try to get it to the net. Long Attempt for a pass there, sails into the zone, and that's icing. Curtis McElhinney faced a pretty good shot there from Wayne Simmons, who's got the lone goal for the Philadelphia Flyers. And watch what Curtis does here. This isn't by mistake that this puck, watch his hard shot by Simmons. Simmons is trying to get a rebound up front. An opportunity, let's say, off that pad to the middle. Curtis keeps that puck coming back towards the same area that it came in from. That's great rebound control by Curtis McElhinney. Something he works on a lot. Well, he has been working on his game, and it shows coming in tonight. And I say he works on that because the Blue Jackets forwards are trying to work on exactly what Wayne Simmons is trying to do there and throw a puck off the pad to create an opportunity offensively. They do that in practice all the time. Gotta love his game. Six and three in his last nine decisions. Game 50 of his Blue Jacket career. Tied at one here at Nationwide, and Brad Larson and I can't remember seeing pressure like we saw earlier in this period. What is that a result of? Well, just, you know, you're wearing them down. The longer you play below their goal line, you make them defend. And, you know, when you get tired, you make mistakes. And they, they made a couple mistakes, and we made them pay for it. And obviously, with the score as it is, you want to keep that pressure up and keep creating those opportunities. Yeah, you know how to. You can't let up, you know, and, and you want to just keep, just trust the process. Make sure you get it deep and make them defend. A true coach there. Trust the process. That's all they're worried about. We hear that at the start of the season, after a win, after a loss, whether it's a win, maybe sometimes it's a win and the coach will say, oh, I don't like the way we play. They're worried about the process, the three zones. And uh, good to hear him say that, trust the process. Really, the Jackets have played a solid game to this point. They double up on the shot clock. Flyers only nine shots on goal. The Jackets have 18. They've had 11 attempted that have been blocked, and they've missed nine for a total of 38. And they certainly have carried the territorial play since the opening faceoff of this one here tonight. A little more than seven minutes left, second period, but we're tied 1-1 in large part due to the goaltending of Ray Emery. Here, Dubinsky moving in. In front! Oh, how did Emery get that one? Everybody 
here in the building thought that Emery was beat there, but somehow, some way, he was able to redirect the attempted shot off his pad and away from difficulty. Here, this is Felino walking in. Poke check there. It's the same pad, that left pad. Dubinsky with a nice play in front just before that. And how about Felino to Hartnell there? Or Felino with the move, Hartnell with the rebound, was it? Wow. Outstanding stops by Emery here. As the Jackets continue to be all over the Flyers here. Connaughton on to Johansson. Felino comes, puts the brakes on, looks to Connaughton at the point. A shot and a save. Big rebound there. It's picked up by Schultz. How about Connaughton? Heads up play. Got that puck through. How many times do we see the defensive with the puck at the blue line? Attempts that shot. It gets blocked or deflected. He does a heck of a job of getting that puck all the way to the goaltender. He's had a great night tonight at both ends of the ice. And here he blocks the attempt there by Simmons. Giroux with a backhand. Great effort by Connaughton. And both ends of the rink. Knocked down there by Winberg. Winberg turning away from traffic. Johansson making his way back to the bench. Puck picked off there. Flyers up with it. Voracek tripped up. Goes awkwardly into the boards. Looks for a penalty to be called. He's got something to say to referee Wes McCauley. Meantime, Jackets move up ice and Isimov takes the Winberg pass. Spins, turns, hangs onto that puck. Looks for Jack Johnson moving in. Johnson now a wraparound attempt. He tried to throw it in front, defending there. And Coley Akimo with a big stop there. He saw Jack Skilly in front there. Tried to thread the needle to him, but it got broken up. Talk about Connaughton and his play at both ends of the ice. He's also leading with four shots on goal. Here comes Jared Bull across the line. Bull throws it in front. Trop can't handle it. And Lawton circling the net. Less than five minutes left. Entertaining hockey here. Jackets dump it. Or rather, the Flyers dump it deep into Jackets territory. There's Lawton dropping it back to the point. Long shot there. Knocked down. Played here by Corey Trop. Stepping up his strike. Trop fights it off. Letestu with Bull. Ball down the right side. Letestu's shot. Ricochets off Schultz. Trop on that right wing. Tosses it behind the net. Picked up here by Jared Bull. Bull looking to sweep it off into the corner. Bouncing puck. Fought off was Letestu there. Chopped ahead. White looking for the return feed. Across the line. Fires one wide of the net. Jackets fed her to head up. Finds Trop at the left wing. Late in the shift for him. He'll backhand it in and make his way over to the bench. Atkinson plays it off that backboard, tosses behind the net. Luke Shen now for the Flyers. Ahead for Reed. Off the stick there of Couturier, picked up by Simmons, overskates the puck. Reed back there to help out. Couturier cruising in the slot. Reed settles it down, sends it up high. Here's a shot by Delzato, and it trickles wide of the net. McElhaney knocked down, there'll be a penalty there. Wes McCauley has not signaled a penalty but definitely there was some uh, goaltending interference there. The Jackets have a word, and uh, McElhaney's slow to get up here. And the crowd still a little upset that there's no call. But get a look at it here. Simmons gets caught up. Ooh. 1-1 the score, 345 remaining, and a big reason why we are tied. It's the goaltending of Ray Emery here tonight. And boy, has he been sharp. Lateral movement, side to side. I don't know how he made that last save right there. Here he is, challenging Polino on a breakaway. Stays with it. Ray Emery had a career-threatening hip injury, if you remember. He had the same problem with his hip as Bo Jackson, the one that forced Bo Jackson to retire. He went through it, stayed with it, waited for another opportunity, and boy, he looks sharp tonight, doesn't he, Jeff? Boy, has he ever looked sharp since the opening faceoff. A couple of quick glove stops in the opening moments of this hockey game, and uh, he has been every bit as strong since, particularly here in the second period. The Jackets storming all around that flyer net. 21-11 of their shots favoring the Jackets. And here, Dubinsky, the lone goal for Columbus. Backhands it behind the net. Calvert with a punishing check there on strike. Down the right wing at center. R.J. Umberger squeezed out there along the wall by Connaughton. Flyers change up. Jack Johnson. 
On to Connaughton, left wing, Hartnell able to redirect it. Emery deals to the corner. Two minutes, 40 seconds left. Luke Shen gets it ahead. That's Simmons with it, long reach, and fought off there in the shoulder of Curtis McElhaney. Away goes Hartnell. Hartnell with Johansson and Felino Trying to lead Felino It's played by the Flyers. Simmons up the left wing. Return. Simmons alone score. Goal score for the Flyers. It's been a pair of seven teams for their respective teams. Sends it off the net. And they score. That one purposely set off the net. The side of the net by Simmons. And Couturier follows it up. And the Flyers have regained the lead. And you said it, Jeff, a little pass off the net by Wayne Simmons. Simmons with good speed down the right side. He knows he's got a man going to the front of the net, and that's Sean Couturier. Watch here. One hand on a stick. Then he just throws it there. The angle it comes off. Couturier gets it. Look at that second attempt. Couturier's actually behind the net there when he whacks it out of the air. Impressive move by Simmons. Great idea. That's a save, and the second one is out of the air. See the Blue Jackets players right away saying high stick. There it is. There's the initial shot. Couturier stays with it. Hang on. They're going to review this one. Looks like Wisniewski actually got clipped with it. See Wisniewski's reaction there. The play is under review. And it is Francis Sheron. video. The ruling on the ice was a goal, so it would have to be conclusive to overturn. Now that's a heck of a play by Wayne Simmons and Sean Couturier. Couturier, first of all, to get that first shot on net, that, he's got no space, and he's got a guy right on his back, but somehow he gets that shot off, and then to stay with that puck as he's behind the net and swipe at it. This was a quick, uh, quick phone call to Toronto. After the review was determined, the puck was struck below the crossbar, and we had a good goal. Well, there you have it. Good goal. And uh, for Couturier, that will be his 12th of the season. Simmons will pick up his second point with the heads-up play to send it off the side of the net. The stick below the crossbar, and the Flyers regain the lead despite being outshot 21-13. Artem and Isimov. Dumps it in wide. And with Philadelphia net. Grossman. Off an Isimov. Roliakovo for Vorchek. Big Vorchek kicking it free. Vorchek being double shifted here now with that fourth line with Belmar and Vandeveld. Vandeveld. Camped in front. Far side. Jackets and Isimov in the slot. Shot blocked in front. Good save at the line there by Savard. Savard hands to Jack Johnson. A minute 20 left. Moved by Wenberg. Wenberg now protects that puck. Drops it back to Savard again. Atkinson off the bench. Looks to walk in. Atkinson does. And tried to tuck it home on the back end. Cam Atkinson. Boy, he's got his feet going Ooh. tonight. Went off. Somebody in front of the net. Blistering shot now with less than a minute to go. Flyers called for icing. Keep it on Fox after this. And every Blue Jackets game, as Fox Sports Ohio breaks down the game, we talk to the players and coaches on Blue Jackets Live, presented by IGS Energy. IGS Energy, take control of your natural gas costs. Enroll at IGSenergy.com. Well, oh, Cam Atkinson, boy, you see his speed here tonight. And that's one of his major assets. As Philadelphia calls a timeout. And how about Craig Berube? We talk about Scott Hartnell play in his 1,001st game here tonight. Craig Berube is one of three players to have 3,000, over 3,000 penalty minutes and over 1,000 games. Dale, Hunt, Dale Hunter, 3,000 penalty minutes, 1,407. That's how many games he played. Ty Domi played 1,020. And Craig Berube played 1,054 games and has over 300, 3,000 penalty minutes in the National Hockey League. Only nine players with over 3,000 penalty minutes. 
And how about Scott Hartnell, just for a little comparison here. He's played 1,001 games. He has 1,500 and 1,521 Pelly minutes. He's got a little ways to go in the Pelly minute department. Yeah, he's got, he's halfway there. <laughs> and Baruby and Dale Hunter are great, great friends. In fact, talking to Baruby this morning, he says he talks to Dale Hunter all the time. And of course, Dale Hunter, who runs the operation, the London Knights, and how many players has Dale Hunter sent to the National Hockey League? Think in terms of some of the great players that have played in that London Knights system. Well, that's a busy career over with Dale Hunter. 1,407 games, over 3,000 penalty minutes. Boy, that's a, that's a lot of time in the penalty box. Now, I want to know how many of those penalty minutes that Barubi picked up that you were responsible for. Oh, there's only a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Left wing feed. Two tough customers, Jody Shelley and Craig Berube. How many times did you drop them with him? Oh, just once. Looks like the jackets. As time runs out, that's a delayed penalty, so Philadelphia's going to have a full two minutes here as they start the third period. Now let's get a look at the penalty here before we break. How about Giroux just threw the game puck? Or attempted to throw the game puck up to a young fan. Jackets will be a man short to start the third period. They are a goal short after 40 minutes. Couturier with a go-ahead goal after Dubinsky had tied it up. After 40 minutes, Philadelphia 2, Columbus 1. Columbus Blue Jackets Hockey on Fox Sports Ohio brought to you by Rush Honda. The best way to say Honda is Rush Honda. And by Ticketmaster. Score. Get the only NHL tickets sold by fans and verified by Ticketmaster. It's all hockey and no hassle right now at NHL.com slash ticket exchange. Moments away from the start of the third period. Ray Emery has been outstanding and he is the IGS energy performer through 40 minutes. And big saves, timely saves. The Blue Jackets have been pushing on this guy all night long, really. But what a second period by the Columbus Blue Jackets. They have got to guard against getting frustrated. Let's take a look at the PNC game summary. And how about the shots on goal, Jeff? Let's take a look at this. Kanaan with four. Dubinsky with three. Atkinson with three. And that's Bellino with three. And Ryan Johansson, zero shots on net. And he's only 33% in the faceoff circle. Ryan Johansson has got to find some room out there and get the puck of the net. Speaking of faceoffs, Flyers have dominated 61% tonight, leading the way Claude Giroux, who's won seven of nine for 78%, and Belmar, five and three for 63%. Third period begins with the Flyers on the power play. Cam Atkinson set off for a holding of the 20-minute mark. So Philadelphia come in third best in the National Hockey League at 23.6%. Jackets, better than 80%, 80.2% on the penalty kill. They are 19th in the league in that regard. Here, this is Strike carrying up ice. On to Braden Shen. Thrown back to the point. Jackets break it up. And Giroux back to retreat. You were talking about the face-offs and how Giroux did so well. How about Wenberg opening face-off this third period? Won it against Giroux, who's hot right now. Drop pass, top of the circle, save, rebound, a second attempt. And the Jackets, Matt Calvert back, able to keep it away from Simmons, who's got two points in this game. A goal and an assist. He continues a point-scoring streak with three games, with four points in the last three. Here's David Savard, long shot, laid up by Dubinsky. Jackets again short-handed. Dubinsky there stopped up, trying to kill some time by holding the puck in the offensive zone, just couldn't reel it in as he stopped and tried to pull the puck into his skates. Across the line, carried in by Couturier. Jackets come up with it, short-handed Foligno. He's got Art of Anisimov with him. Foligno, drop pass for Anisimov, fires his shot that Emery gets just enough of to send it wide. All right, Foligno did a great job there. Dropped the puck and then went straight to the net between the defensemen. That means it made the defensemen have to make a decision, allowing that shot to get through by Anisimov. Jackets have uh, had the better opportunities here while a man short. Well, they're just skating again. And the message between periods was probably pretty simple. 
stay positive because you know what? The opportunities we've had, we haven't been able to put past Ray Emery. But look at this shift right here. They're doing all the right things. They just got to stay positive and stay on their game. I'll tell you what, the fans certainly appreciate it. They are saluting the Jackets because much of this power play time with Atkinson off and down to two seconds now has been played in Philadelphia territory. Here comes Atkinson. Outstanding penalty kill by the Jackets. They went to the offensive. Two minutes plus gone here in this third period. And much as they did, Jody, in the first and the second, Jackets carry a territorial play early on in each period. They've come out and certainly done an outstanding job. You'd like to see them rewarded for their hard work. They've got to get to Emory. They've got to get shots and rebounds the same way that the Philadelphia Flyers are funneling pucks towards the net and getting the rebounds. The Jackets have got to do the same. Rimmed around the board, strike, dumps it back into the corner. Jackets battle below their own goal line, picked up there by the Flyers, but quickly knocked away. Good work there by Johansson. Reed drops it back for Grossman. Jackets, Johansson heads off. Off the wall, backhanded by R.J. Umberger. Picked up on that right wing, fires the long shot, sails wide. Jackets clear the front of the net, allowing McElhaney to see it, but the puck sailed wide. Here's Steele by Hartnell. Trying to feed Letestu there. Hartnell will head off. Yeah, Hartnell was out there quite a while and made a nice little play to get that puck and then get it to Mark, sorry, Mark Letestu. Our AEP power play summary, both teams with a uh, opportunity. And as you can see, does not figure in the scoring here with the goals. The three of them all scored at even strength. Great job by that guy. Nick Foligno, you talk about the crowd cheering on. Well, it was because Nick Foligno had the puck in his skates in the offensive zone. The Flyers were all around him trying to poke it out, but love the second and third effort by Nick Foligno on the puck. Right wing, Giroux. Voracek hustling after it, but good coverage there by Alexander Winberg. Philadelphia back in their own zone. Three and a half minutes plus gone here in the third period. Jackets, again, as we've mentioned previously, will head out after this one. It's on the Long Island. Take down division lead. New York Islanders. Certainly had an outstanding season. Shot sticked aside this time by Emery. Here's Connaughton coming off the bench and lets one go. And misses the mark. Connaughton coming into this period, leading the Jackets in shots with four. How about Cam Atkinson coming off the bench like that? Didn't get the puck. Off the bench with authority. Good speed. Love to see the guys come off and off, come off the bench like that and go on the bench hard. He came off the bench in the second period similarly and got a quality shot on goal. And we got to look there at Connaughton having a few words with James Wisniewski. Well, Connaughton's going to let a shot go here. He gets tangled up with 40. But Cavier right after, a little, a little bit of a pileup. But again, as a defenseman or someone taking that shot from the blue line, your first job is to get it past that first defender. And Connaughton does that not almost every time, but he gets it usually on net. Cavalier got one on that quality shot that was turned aside by the stick save of McElhaney. And here now, a penalty upcoming. Corey Trapp for knocking down Emery, and the crowd not at all pleased about that as Luke Chen has some words for Corey Trapp. Trapp's going to go off for goaltending interference, and the Flyers will get their second consecutive power play. Number 26, Columbus, two minutes, goaltender interference. Oh, there you go. And Corey Trapp's driving to the net as Jared Bowles got the puck on a stick down the right side. Corey Trapp's getting, trying to get around Luke Shen. You see 22, big man. And there it is. Corey Trapp tried to stop up there. He's just kind of got around Luke Shen. Just probably thought or forgot where he was at on the ice. Watching to see if Jared Bull was going to throw that puck to the net. He did. It just went wide. Ron made the call. And Dubinsky talking. Sharon here still. Dubinsky probably bringing up the interaction with the Flyers player and McElhaney in the second period with no call. 
good point. And the crowd certainly showing their displeasure. Well, they weren't pleased with that McElhinney play, if you recall. Oh, yeah, they let the crowd, they let the officials know, but to no avail. Flyers deep in the zone. Simmons sets up behind the net, set off the wall. This is Giroux. Flips the backhand. Strike. Giroux, one timer. Oh, Pat saving a beauty. The rebound sent home, and Simmons has got his third point and second goal. It's 3 1, and McElhinney is in some difficulty. Curtis McElhaney is in some difficulty there. And he is not going to get up here. I wonder if the bench is even aware of it. Just now getting back to his feet. Remember that collision in the second period with the flyer player landing on top of him. Watch this here. Wayne Simmons, 17 in front of the net. He's moving like a goaltender. And as that puck comes out, he's got a stick on the ice. And he scored a bunch of his goals right there, just like that. That's a power play goal. The man in front is so vital to take away the eyes of the goalie. But then how about being able to turn around and find the puck and get a stick on it? Wayne Simmons is a guy that does that very well. I'm keeping an eye there on McElhinney. He continues to flex that right side. Tony, remember that second period with the Flyer player falling on top? of McElhinney. He didn't get up too quick on that one either. Well, that was the play we were talking about. One of the plays because the crowd saw it and was looking for a call of some sort. And then you see Trop go in and, and bump Ray Emery and get the call. So he's just kind of skating it off there. He's a gamer. Started eight of the last nine games as we get a look one more time at the overhead here. You see him flinching just seconds later. 3 1 Philadelphia. Simmons with his second of the night, third point. Giroux and Vorchek draw the assist at 5 4 on the power play. Columbus has done a good job with Giroux and Voracek, keeping them off the scoreboard, keeping them off the shot clock, too. But they're a power play opportunity. Those guys find the back of the net. Hustling back here is Golubov. Goes ahead to Dubinsky. Atkinson unable to get a stick on it. Jackets at the line. Dubinsky will dump in. No reason for the Columbus Blue Jackets to change their game, Jeff. We thought they've carried the play here. They've had great opportunities. You give the Philadelphia Flyers a couple power play chances. Yeah, they, they get one, but got to stay with the game plan here. A lot of time left in this third period. Skilly fights through the check of Grossman. Hangs onto that puck away from the Cavalier. Puck ricochets to the point and over the glove. Jack Johnson. Here's Winberg dancing into the right wing. Winberg into the slot to give and go. And the shot blocked in front. Koliakovo dropped in front of that intended shot of Alexander Wenberg. Now one of the keys to shoot early, shoot often, and he's some out there with the puck on his stick. Nice play by Wenberg. Should have thought about putting that right on net, at least looking at that play off the goalie. If not, put it off the back of the net in over the goal line. It's a cliche, but it is so true. The best pass is a shot on goal and a rebound. Johansson's shot is blocked. Locked out here by Del Zotto. Left wing goes for a check, and it's rifled in. you got to take those shots in those areas, Jeff, and that's something that you worked so hard to get there, and especially they had the Flyers kind of caught in a bad change, and Grossman was trying to get back in the play. When you have that little bit of an edge, and you have the puck in your stick in front of the net. <laughs> Hartman almost depositing the Flyer there in the bench. It was Luke Chen who tried to get back at Hartnell. They were separated. And Hartnell tried to get his team going here. They trail by two. Jackets down by two here at Nationwide Arena. That man right there, Curtis McElhaney, appeared to be in discomfort after the last goal. But let's look, let's go back to the second period here. Wayne Simmons in front of the net. 
escape catches up with McElhaney's pad there. Boy, that's an awkward position for Curtis. And this is Wayne Simmons off the Giroux shot. You see Curtis there to your left. It took a little while getting up. Seems to be fine now, but... That goal was scored on a goalie interference call in that first play with Simmons. Boy, I'll tell you what. The player definitely got tangled up with the goalie there. Without question. And I think that uh, that first contact with Simmons affected him a little bit there. He was slow to get up. Certainly worthy of goalie interference if you look at the call. And then the second time on that goal. And here the Jackets have cut the deficit. Trop sends it towards the net and is redirected. And the Jackets are on the board. Did Jared Bull get that tip? Jared Bull, Jeff. It'll be his first of the year. Point streak. As he said he would. And what a time to score a goal. That's got to feel good. Watch this play by Corey Trop. The test is in there, too. Great pass by Corey Trop. Finally, the man with his stick on the ice in front of the net. Boy, Corey Trop playing with confidence. Jared Bull right there. Looks to the fans behind the net and says, thank you very much. Bull with his first of the year, and as I told him, he had two in the preseason. We're going to have to start calling him Jared Bull. And he's got it tonight, so we'll go Jared Bull to Jared Bull. And that's three points in the last four games for him. Good job by him. That's got to feel great. Long time coming. And this pass is perfect. He's got to beat the stick and the pad of Emery. And to number 55. Great play by Mark Letestu, too, behind the net. Those little plays by Mark Letestu, well, I'll tell you what. Two guys behind the net on Mark Letestu. Trop gets the puck and ends up feeding Jared Bull for his first of the season. Nice. He said this morning, I'll start another streak. And he certainly has lived up to that. The Jackets are right back in this one. Plenty of time remain. 11. Just under 11 minutes here now. Puck thrown in front. Jackets. Dubinsky chops it off the wall. Calvert with a backhand pass looking for Atkinson. Trop and Letestu. First goal for Bull in 63 games. Dating back. To the 12th of November of 2013 against Washington. Johansson is dropped. Simmons with a pair of goals and an assist. Sweeps it behind the net. Stepping up. There is Schultz. Handed to Reed. Cycling. Dishes to Simmons. Out of the corner. Simmons chips it back looking for Schultz, but it's picked off by Johansson, who's squeezed out by a pair of the Flyers, and Johansson not happy at all, and bangs his stick on the ice. Feldy was interfered with, and makes his way to the bench. Got to use that as motivation, Jody. Well, he's looked strong all night. He's getting frustrated. Here's Connaughton. But he's got to guard against that. He's just got to keep going. He's looked fast. He's been strong in the puck. But I'll tell you what, he's a target. Being one of the best players in the league. Guys are going to go after him. Comes Teams are coming in with a strategy to shut him down. Now well, comes with the territory, and he's got to use that as motivation. Left wing and across the line. That is Vandeveldi. Vandeveldi in the corner. There's Connaughton. Stands him up. Wisniewski throws it in front. Winberg on here to Skilly. Skilly back for Winberg. Can't make the play. Now Cole Iacobo hands it to Del Zotto. Del Zotto can't make the play. The Jackets. This is Jack Skilly with a nice heads up defensive play. He's had a few of those tonight. Strong stick at the line as Del Zotto tried to make that pass of ice. Luke Shen tying up the Jackets forward. Bull back out there. That fourth line gets the Jackets back in the game. Thrown right back out by Coach Richards. Yeah, they've had a strong game this fourth line. You know, we talk about the Blue Jackets putting the pressure on all game. Well, there's been no letdown. Every line that goes out has been very strong in keeping the momentum. So that's the fourth line's job, too, is to get down there. And how about them getting a goal, big goal here in the third period? Less than eight and a half left. Bull chips it out of the zone. Hustling back. His strike. Emery sends it ahead. It's picked off there by the alert. Matt Calvert. 
Schultz, far side. 8-12 left. Battle on the far wall. Strike comes up with it. Schultz. And strikes. Looks off him. Ahead here. Braden Shen fires his shot. Steered aside there by McElhaney. McElhaney top of that goal crease. Puck sent wide. 7.45 left. This is Jack Johnson. A power play goal right now. The difference of the hockey game. Atkinson speeds through and across the line. Dubinsky hands it to Jack Johnson. Thrown in front. Emery down. He'll cover up. 7.28 left third period. Jackets celebrate. Drop in front. Jared Bull with his first of the year. The nationwide arena where Jared Bull's first of the year has cut the margin to 3-2. Flyers still lead it, though. Tonight on Fox Sports Live on Fox Sports 1, five NHL games in action. We've got highlights. Maybe Jared Bull's goal as well from across the league. It's NBA All-Star Weekend. We'll preview all the festivities and hear the latest from the most connected man in the NBA. And is this the end for Marshawn Lynch? Some new Seattle fans won't want to hear. Tonight, Fox Sports Live, Fox Sports 1. Jared Bull with the goal here, as we mentioned. That's got to feel pretty good. You press and press and press. And how about that play by Latestu and Trop, his line mates tonight, to get him that goal. James Wisniewski on here for Connaughton. Hartnell on the left wing, attempting to get a stick on it. He currently is riding a three-game goal streak and a four-game point streak. Honored here prior to the start of tonight's game. First thousandth game, thousandth game played Monday against L.A. here. Like to see him keep that streak on. Perfect time for him to get that goal. Yes. He does have a flair for the dramatic, so keep an eye on 43 Hartnell. Hartnell takes a hit there. And strike. And he's got extra motivation. Sorry, Jeff, playing against his old team, as we've mentioned a couple times tonight. You don't want to see them come in here and beat you. Well, talking to a couple of the Flyers there as he heads off the ice. And just throwing that hard hit. Less than six and a half left. James Wisniewski drops it back. What do you go about? On comes Tootin. Off the bench replacing Wisniewski. In time to make the play, and Golubov sends it in deep. Anisima, first on the fourth check. There's Luke Chen. Le Cavalier throws it back behind the net. Jackets pressure below the goal line. Winberg finishing the check there. Look at how far Federer Tutin is up on the play. That's a defenseman below the hash mark, keeping that puck in the offensive zone. He's got the green light because the forward was back there backing him up. Lindbergh not giving up on it, continues to battle. Took a hard hit there from Luke Shen. No damage done, went right back in the corner, continued the board battle, and there it set off the wall. Elmar in pursuit, played there by Golubov. Here's Skilly. Skilly will dump in, sent wide, less than five and a half minutes left. Off the wall. Jackets pick it off. Atkinson coming off that bench, anticipating. Jack Johnson lets one fly. At Calvert. Calvert. Dubinsky. Both in the corner. Big Grossman. Sweet. Working over Dubinsky. He just took a shot in the back from Jack Johnson. That puck hit him. I don't think Grossman even flinched. <laughs> he hit with the puck so much. He just, just part of his game. Dubinsky. And Grossman again, Atkinson in pursuit. That's Simmons with it. Wayne Simmons sends it out. And Savard will scoop it back right there at his own line. Deals it on the right wing for Atkinson. Drop past Dubinsky. In front. Oh, the Jackets score! Emery makes an outstanding stop, but Cam Atkinson follows it up and is able to tuck it home. And we're all tied up at three. with an outstanding stop, but Atkinson goes hard to the net for his 12th goal. We talked about him leading the Jackets in uh, game-winning goals. Here's another important goal, a clutch goal. It ties it up. And how about Cam Atkinson here? 
There's a theme with these goals tonight, Jeff. Off the goalie. Guy going to the stick. Net with his stick on the ice. Cam Atkinson, we talked about him with his speed here. As Hartnell comes out again with Johansson and Felino. I'm telling you, there's not much wrong with the Columbus Blue Jackets game tonight. And I'm glad to see they're, see they're sticking with it here. Down by two, the Jackets have pulled up their socks and are right back in this hockey game. Here, Del Zotto drilled high and wide. Atkinson from Hartnell and Dubinsky. Johansson finishing a check and plays called some pushing and shoving. But Atkinson with his 12th. How many times tonight has he gone hard to the net there after an Emery outstanding stop from point blank range? Well, how about Dubinsky there, Jeff? Watch this here. Dubinsky gets his puck. Great play by Atkinson. Now Atkinson goes to the net. I thought Dubinsky was going to shoot that puck. Hartnell with a great play. Kind of shot it back into Emery. And luckily, Atkinson was there to clean it up. Well, Hartnell continues a point scoring streak. We said he had the flair for the dramatic. And how about that? It uh, looked like he had the goal on a stick, didn't it? If you look at that replay, there was an opening there. That's a tough play. On your forehand, hard pass. He probably wasn't even expecting the pass because it looked like Dubinsky had a good opportunity. But Atkinson with a great idea after making that pass. The give and go. Go to the net. We're all tied up. Hartnell had the right idea, but uh, Emery rose to the occasion but couldn't control the rebound, and Atkinson was able to send it home. But a penalty upcoming here. The Jackets will be a man short with 3.42 left. Not in the box. The call is interference. And let's look at this here. Wisniewski, you're going to see Kanat come into your screen quickly right there. Puck's nowhere around. It's thrown to the net. Kanat takes the man out. Mo Drew here setting up his players as the faceoff is to the left of Curtis McElhaney. Huge kill needed here. From the draw, won by the Flyers. Strike on to Giroux. Oh, Giroux, cross ice, quick shot, and it's deflected out of play. It went off McElhaney, and up into the netting, we'll get another face off. Good job by the Columbus Blue Jackets. Four guys working together tight in the middle of the ice. Trying not to let this pass go across. Bo Giroux's got the skill, though. He feathers it across. And that's a set play to Borchak, who's just hanging out on that weak side all by himself. Good job by the Jackets to defend. Emery left there for strike. And at 35, as you see, remaining in the power play. Strike steps to center. Collides with his own teammate there, Simmons. And they'll regroup in neutral ice. Giroux brings it across the line, hands it to Graydon Shen. Chip to the point. Cross ice. Here, Giroux into the slot. Comes right to Simmons, and he cannot convert from backhand to forehand. And great work by the Jackets, and they dump it down. Now it's an option to Braden Shen. Giroux tried to feed it to him, but the Blue Jackets read that very well, broke it up, and got it down the ice. Voracek to the line. Wisniewski steps up and dumps it back into Philadelphia territory. Less than a minute left of the power play. Oh, Giroux, captain of the Flyers, drops it back now. Takes it across the line. Along that wing, thrown back to the point here for Delzato. Delzato, Giroud, the goal line, backhanded by Umberger and McElhaney the stop. Anticipating and making the stop. What a play there by Umberger. RJ Umberger shows his stick here as an option. And watch this. 18. Backhand. Watch it on his backhand. Gets it. And just spins around all in one motion. He's practiced that a few times. But how about Curtis McElhaney making the save off of two stick there. And then reels it in. Oliakovo left point. Delzato right point. 
Face off to the left of McElhaney. 31 seconds remain on the power play for Philadelphia. The draw won by Lecavalier, but it's quickly gobbled up by Letestu with Johansson. Swept deep. Johansson will head off. Letestu. It's back up ice as Delzato hammers in. Down to 12 seconds of power play time. Jackets come up with it again. Letestu, a clearing pass for Atkinson, who's tied it up. Delzato. Sorry, Jeff. Letestu tried to time that perfectly. He knows Atkinson's got the speed. He tried to just lay it in an area for him and then head off. Good play. Smart play again. No surprise by Mark Letestu. Jackets kill it off. Connaughton back on. Two shots on that power play. Tied at three. Less than 90 seconds left. And the puck cleared over the glass and up into the crowd. There's a look at Ray Emery, and it's time for tonight's Ohio Health Great Save. And it saves tonight Atkinson with a great opportunity on Ray Emery. And then Foligno, breakaway, same pass. That was back-to-back -back saves for that man who stood tall. Blue Jackets stuck with the game plan, finally got a couple more passes to tie it up. But, boy, he, was, he looked unbeatable early. Boy, Foligno just hammered there along the wall by Schultz. A little more than a minute left. Here comes Couturier. Walking in, Couturier trying to tuck it home. That right pad down of McElhaney. Oh, has he made? We've talked about the goaltender at the other end, Emery, but I'll tell you what, McElhaney's made some big stops himself. And that was a heads-up play by Jack Johnson to let McElhaney have the shooter the whole way in. Curtis did his job and kept the puck out. Final minute of regulation, tied at three. Hartnell to the point. Jack Johnson, gloved by Emery. Off the wall, picked up and knocked by Vandevelde into Jackets territory. Final 40 seconds. Murray Emery didn't want that face-off down in his head. He made the save with his glove, shook it out, and got it to his defenseman to get it out. Crowd chanting CBJ. Right in on Mackling. Fired into Philadelphia territory. Final 16 seconds. Jackets, Dubinsky, trying to set something up here. Crowd looking for a penalty to be called. That's Voracek throwing it down the far side. It's icing. 5.1 seconds remain. And again, the crowd looking for a penalty to be called as Dubinsky was driven to the ice. Watch this play by Curtis McElhaney. Couturier's coming in. Jack Johnson's on the left of your screen. He's in the center. He's staying out. He wants to take the pass and the back door away, that wide open net. See Jack Johnson there in front, protecting for the pass. Good job of McElhaney. Here's the non-call. Dubinsky has the puck behind the net. And the crowd reacted to that. Final seconds of regulation. Flyers to the line. Connaughton, quick shot. There is the whistle. The horn not working here tonight in the building. And we are through regulation. The Jackets pick up their 50th point of the season as Atkinson ties it up at the 15-20 mark of the third period. We are headed to four-on-four -four overtime. Score tied as we get set for four on four sudden death overtime. And a look at the two coaches' respective overtime records. And how about the big lots big play tonight? The thing that got it all started for the Jackets when they trail by two. Yeah, timely goal. How about a goal and a comeback? Bid, and there it is. That makes it 3 2 for the Jackets. They were looking for anything to beat Ray Emery. Great play by Latestu on the boards. Corey Trump with the pass, and Jared Bull with the stick on the ice, makes no mistake. Mark the test doing that goal, by the way, Jeff. Great job behind the net, winning a battle. If that doesn't happen, the puck doesn't get to Corey Trump, who gets it to Jared Bull. Just those little things that, that this guy does. They're not easy either, I'm telling you. It's not easy to win a board battle like he does, but... Jackets in overtime here. Here we go. Four on four. As we get set, Jackets in regulation, out shooting the Flyers 30 to 24. Jackets won in overtime on this guy's heroics, Connaughton. In the previous game, the Flyers tied it up. Braden Shen in the final minute. 
It was here at Nationwide. It looks like he just took a shot to the head from Luke Shen. Drop pass. Moving in. Blowing a tire there was Del Zotto as he tried to circle the net. Dubinsky on for Matt Calvert. Calvert across the line. Luke Shen rides him out of the play. Myers head up ice. Couturier across the line. Couturier trying to walk to the net. Jack Johnson with his steals. Up the left wing boards. This is Ryan Johansson. Johansson and Atkinson. Johansson fires the shot. Boy, he was looking for the near corner. Didn't miss by much. Moved by Emery with a punch attempt there at the puck. And circling. This is Claude Giroux. Ian Voracek work up front. Giroux across the line. Pulls the trigger and sends it high and wide. Schultz. Giroux with Voracek. Jake Voracek wins the board battle, tries to throw it in front, gets it up high. This is Strike. Strike. Giroux tipped there by Giroux and following it and tracking it down was Curtis McElhaney. Great reactionary save by Curtis with the glove. He's chatting with the goal. He's chatting with the referee here. Well, the Jackets, be it overtime or shootout, will head out after this one and move on to the island. Jack Capuano and company, the New York Islanders, Metropolitan Division leaders. Tavares and company will host the Jackets tomorrow night. Our coverage begins at 6.30 with Blue Jackets Live pregame. Brian Gieselslaw and Bill Davich, the opening face-off from Uniondale, New York, 7 o'clock. Something going off the clock here. They're just checking. Curtis McElhaney having a word with uh, Wes McCauley. And there's somebody apparently in the crowd with a laser light flashing it at McElhaney. And he had something to say to Wes McCauley as play was whistled down there in Jackets territory. Wow. Yeah. Here's Tootin across the line. Tootin chips it off into the corner. Luke Shen. Korliakovo out of the zone. Backhanded. Tootin. Golubov. Back for Feder Tootin. Golubov. Down that right side. Nick Felino. Felino deep in the zone. Walks away from Luke Shen. Here's Wisniewski with a shot. Rebound scores. Artem Anisibov and the Jackets pour off the bench, winning in overtime. And again, a rebound left in front, and Anisibov tucks it home. The Jackets win in come-from-behind fashion. Columbus Blue Jackets tonight start to finish, put a game together, and they finish it off on a play that starts right here. Felino with the puck, watch this. James Wisniewski leans on it, and then Anisimov alone in front. And that's got to feel pretty good as he checks the crowd as they erupt. Felino wins that battle on Luke Shen. Wisniewski gets it on Emery, who was strong all night long. And Anisimov with great patience as the Blue Jackets celebrate the comfortable high victory in overtime against the Philadelphia Flyers. Wisniewski and Felino draw the assist on Easy Bob with his third of the season. The Jackets come from a 3-1 third period deficit to win in overtime. We're back to wrap it up.